Hello, today I'm looking at multifunctional flashlight with a 180 degree turning angle. Let's do an unboxing. <laughs> I could get the stuff out of the box. Uh, okay, so USB, oh, what's that? A to C cable. I think that's it actually. And in fact, there are no instructions so you have to work out the features for yourself. So let's have a look. Uh, there's a button, press the button. The flashlight comes on, press it again. It goes dim and I think, yes, that's multiplexed. And then press it again. Oh, I meant to do a strobe warning. Sorry if uh, you're affected by things like that. Let's turn that off. And you get a uh, digital decimal percentage here state of charge which is quite a neat feature on something that costs about three dollars um okay so let's take a look at whether that's multiplexing and it is now if you double click it goes slightly brighter and that's not multiplexing oh, of course the camera is multiplexing so that doesn't really tell us anything does it um okay let's do the long press so long press and it switches to the warm white lights at the front here now it looks like that, like there are two leds missing but they're not because if you press it you get the red led press it again you get the blue led press it again strobe warning although this time it's red and blue alternate flashing sort of police car style press it again and it goes off now if you double click it puts the front lights on full brightness for 10 seconds and it always returns to where you were uh, prior to double clicking. So that returns to off. Now if I press and hold to go to the front lights, let's go to the red one for example. Double click, it puts the front lights on maximum brightness uh, and then 10 seconds later it will return to where we were which was the red light and now I can cycle through and switch it off so yeah you've got the front lights bright uh, dim strobe won't do that for long you've got the uh, front face with the warm white red blue red and blue police car and off and you've got double click to put the front lights on full brightness for 10 seconds and then return to where you were. So what other features does this have? Well, it has a pocket clip, which has about just about the right amount of springiness. Some of them are either too tight or too loose, but that's about right. Oh, and it has this rotating head so that you can turn these front lights um, so they're facing in the same direction as the warm white lights there. But there is a slight issue with this, and that's when you go to press the button it just slides, it just swivels around. So you actually have to hold it to get the strobe warning, to get the various functions. It's pretty useless actually, um, better used in this direction because then you can press the button with your finger behind and get a good purchase on it. Uh, there is something else, you've got USB charging here with a USB type C. And interestingly, you've got um, a USB type A power bank type functionality. So this can actually power other things from that USB type A output. Um, you've also got two magnets here so that you can stick this onto something metallic. So let's use the included USB uh, cable to charge another one of these uh, little flashlights. This one's much smaller. Doesn't have the USB type A output. Oh, you can see the battery behind a nice uh, smoked plastic cover there. But it's got a USB type C input. So let's charge it from this. So plug USB type A into... Oh, that's a bit tight. Uh, and the USB type C into there. Uh, why hasn't that started working. I don't know. Let's try reversing that. Sometimes that helps. Uh, no, that's not actually doing anything, which is interesting. <laughs> Let me work out why. 
Right, I've got a feeling this might be full. I think I might have charged that. So let's switch to uh, this, which again, you can see the battery through a nice frosted plastic. Well, this one's pretty much clear plastic. Uh, plug that in, a red light comes on. And when this device is outputting, you do get the uh, percentage state of charge indicator, which is uh, quite handy. So yes, you can use this as a power bank to charge other things. Uh, not sure whether it's going to charge a phone. Actually, that'd be quite an interesting test. Uh, here's my old flip phone, which I've had to stop using because it's not that the screens don't work, it's that the switch inside the hinge, which tells it when to flip backwards and forwards between the front screen and the inner screen, is really flaky. Um, but this has been sat in my drawer for a while now. It's probably completely discharged, so let's plug it in. Oh, not very convincing USB Type-C connector. This has come on. Oh, and power's being gobbled because <laughs> it's reduced in percentage. Nothing's happened on here yet. Uh, maybe it takes a few moments. Right, that's interesting. Um, this cable that came with this thing um, is too noddy to charge this phone, but using a slightly thicker cable, one that uh, I know works, Yes, this ha does show the charging symbol, and this is uh, percentage is still going down. Can I switch this on now and get an actual... No, I don't appear to be able to. I think I let it go quite flat. Uh, so, but uh, no, that is charging. So yes, this can in theory charge this phone, but probably not at a very fast rate. Now, while I was uh, fiddling about with USB-A plugs, I pulled this out and it's got a little barb on the rubber there, which fits through a hole there, but it's very difficult to push that back in. Um, in any case, I intend uh, to open this up. Um, now, these screws on the back are Torx T6, so let's get a screwdriver. Uh, yes, here we are, Torx T6. So let's get these screws out of here and take a little look uh, inside to see what we have inside the unit. Well, actually, before we do that, let's go into macro mode. All right, there we are in macro mode because I want to look through the front window of this thing with a torch. And you can see there that there is a chip, which is a T-Power TP4333. And so that is the lithium battery charging chip for when you put power in through the USB Type-C connector. But it also has um, a synchronous boost converter, I think it is, which um, is doing the job of putting power out of the USB type A connector. There's also an anonymous microcontroller at the top there with no markings on it. But anyway, let's continue to take the thing apart and take a look inside. Right, let's pull the back off. And uh, there we can see the lithium cell. Let's come down a bit. Um, any markings on it? Yes, it is a 3.7 volt. 1200 milliamp hour, 4.44 watt hours. Um, now, is it protected? I don't think it is because you can see the tabs going into the sort of jelly wind uh, material and they appear to have the red and black soldered straight onto them and I can't see a PCB. So I don't think there's any protection here. I think the protection is afforded by the um, chip on the PCB, by that TP4333. So let's get this PCB out, but I've got to be a little bit careful because with no protection on this cell, those wires are very close to each other on that PCB. Are they soldered on well? I, I need to have a closer look at that. But anyway, let's undo these two screws. Now, just got to be very careful not to short anything um, because I don't want to short out an unprotected lithium cell. So it's a bit nervy, this. Uh, oh, I've got to get the USB sockets out to get this PCB out. Um, 
And there it is. And I mean, you can see most of it through that front window. Let's take a closer look. Right, what have we got on here? Um, there, oh, mustn't short anything with the metal tip of this. There's the T Power TP4333. Um, what's that? A 161 or A191, is it? Um, here are the warm white LEDs. That's the red one there. This is the blue one. Other marked RL and BL. There's the anonymous microcontroller. It has no markings. Um, these wires are marked 1, 2, 3, 4, C minus and C plus. Now what's C minus and C plus? They are blue and red and go into the head. So do they go to these LEDs? They might also go to the switch and they might also go to this um, indicator PCB. We'll have to take a look at that in a moment. Uh, what else we got on here? A couple of transistors, whether they be MOSFETs or uh, bipolar, I don't know. That's Y2 by the look of it. Can't quite make that one out on the camera. Um, it's got a couple of these 512 resistors, so that's uh, 5K1, and they go off to the C, uh, the two CC terminals, I think it is, just to tell uh, upstream USB C type power supplies to just keep providing power. They're the sort of always on resistors. There's a R150 low value resistor there. I assume that's current sensing, uh, presumably so that this knows when you plug in an external device and when it stops pulling current so that this can shut off. And that's about all there is on that board. Oh, one other thing, on the back of the PCB next to the USB type A connector, there's a 1R5, oh, what is that? 1.5 microhenries, is it? <laughs> I forget how these numbering systems work, but yeah, a little inductor there, presumably for the synchronous uh, boost converter to bring the 3.7 volts from this up to five volts on the USB type A. Right, now let's look at the head of this thing. Um, so there are four screws in the top here. Let's take those out. I'll just put the back on so that the battery doesn't fall out. Well, I'll put two screws in the back using the Torx driver. And yeah, we'll open the head. Actually, one screw will do. Let's open this head and see what's in here. Right, is that unscrewed enough to take this off? Uh, Mostly, let's get these other screws out. Okay, so there's a bezel, a clear perspex or plastic. Can't say perspex because it might not be. Um, a plastic uh, reflector type thing, a Cobb LED printed circuit board. Let's get that off its little pegs. Oh, very limited cable length on there. I'll see if I can push that to one side so we can see the switch. That's sticking to the magnet. Um, the switch and the little digital display thing. So underneath the um, Cobb LED PCB, which is an aluminium PCB on the top there, uh, there's a PCB shoved down uh, for the push button and the little digital display. And it does actually have an 8-pin chip on it. Now, I assume it's a microcontroller to do all the sort of segment generation and stuff for the display and possibly also reading the uh, switch pulses, if that's indeed necessary. Maybe it does debouncing or something. Um, but yeah, there's a little additional microcontroller in there, I think mostly uh, for that display. Also, of course, all the wires come through this hole. On this underside, there's a circlip there um, because when you turn this, of course, the whole thing has to rotate uh, to accommodate that 180 degree turning. Okay, let's put this back together. So I want the reflector there sitting on top of the uh, two cobs. I want the front plastic cover and I want the bezel 
to go back on there. Let's put the screws in. Yeah, these screws that came out of the front here have all got spirals of plastic on the thread, so taking this front off pretty much strips all the threads out. So I'm not expecting that to do... No, that doesn't do up anymore because all the plastic inside has been carved out, possibly because these get tightened too tight um, by the manufacturer. And so there's not a lot holding this on. So if you do get some of these, just bear in mind that taking the front off... Yeah, that's not tightening up. Um, is fairly destructive, although taking the back off seems to work fine because these pillars are probably more substantial. Um, one interesting thing, if it is charging something else via the USB type A and then you plug in a USB type C and proceed to charge it, um, well I was going to say it no longer charges the uh, device on the other end but that would not appear to be the case. So forget that. Right, I'm going to have to come clean um, and say that I've got more of than one of these. So let's try that again. Um, if you are charging something else, so this one is charging, you can see the little flashing green LED there. Um, if you're charging something else from this unit and then you charge it, like so, then it stops outputting on its USB type A plug uh, this one, to the other device. So the point is this chip, the TP4333, cannot um, both act as a charge controller to charge the battery inside here, but also a synchronous boost converter to provide 5 volts to another device for charging it. It can only do one thing at a time. Having said that, um, it is quite interesting if you plug it into itself because it charges itself. So I've got the cable supplied with it uh, plugged into the USB Type A and going into the USB Type C and it's charging. Now of course <laughs> it's not really charging, it won't go up from 73%. In fact over uh, a period of time it will come down. So what's actually happening here? Well I'll tell you what, I won't say any more. Have a, a go in the comments section, let me know what you think uh, is giving this thing the ability to charge itself. When I've just shown that that uh, chip cannot operate in both charging and outputting modes at the same time. So why is this working? Um, I might do more on this. Um, we'll have a look at the data sheets on the TP4333 perhaps and some experiments with multiples of these in another video. But uh, for this one, that's it. Cheerio.